Hello friends, this is Bill Haken with another coronavirus comfort from the scriptures, the word of God, and prayer. We're continuing our study in the book of Philippians, the book about rejoicing, joy, rejoicing, gladness, in spite of circumstances, and that certainly is a great topic for this pandemic. We have made our way all the way down to verse 27, and I'd like to read, advise you, ask you, encourage you to get your Bible and follow along, please, as I read, beginning in verse 27 to the end of the chapter, all right? Paul goes on to say, as he speaks about striving and suffering for Christ, I want you to notice the word striving and the kind of striving he's talking about. It's not the strife that we're seeing across America today. It's not even the strife among Christians on what the best way is to reopen the church. That's not the kind of striving he's talking about. So I want you to notice, please, and listen as I read. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you, that you are standing firm, now watch, in one spirit, here watch the ones, in one spirit, with one mind, striving together, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel and not frightened in anything by your adversaries, opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had and now hear that I still have. Now that's very, very important uh, verses, my friends, because the Apostle Paul is encouraging the, the saints, the believers at Philippi, that they need to be united in the defense and the propagation of the gospel. They need to be united. They need to be standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving together working side by side for the gospel, for the, the sake of the gospel. Today, people are striving, but they're striving about the wrong things. They're not striving together to get out the gospel. They're, stri they're striving, arguing, fighting, bickering about what the best plan is for opening or not opening, fill, fill in the blank, the church, the state, the country, the county, the township. That's a waste of time to, to argue about that. It doesn't do any good. It's useless. Did you know that most arguing that people do is, is not only useless, but it's actually harmful because it hurts, it hurts their uh, inside metabolism. It hurts your, your stomach. If you're prone to ulcers, it's Arguing and fighting just makes your ulcer worse. It, it makes you have all kind of indigestion and upset stomach and heartburn. Why would you want to do that to yourself? I, that's not wise. Don't waste your breath arguing with people about who's right about the virus. God knows when it's going to end. You, know, I, you, you need to be as safe as you feel the need to be. And I'm not knocking that. But I'm just saying, don't disagree, argue with somebody else who has a different opinion about whether they should wear a mask or not wear a mask or any of those things. That's useless. That's a waste of time. It's a waste of time to argue about whether or not you can reopen safely. If you don't feel comfortable in reopening the church where you attend, then don't go. Then stay home. Then worship online. If, you, if the Holy Spirit leads you to worship online church, then you're right. If the Holy Spirit leads you when your church opens to come back physically and gather with medical considerations, social distancing and all that, if the Holy Spirit leads you to do that, then you're right. You're right. There's no wrong way to worship God. Jesus said, the Father is seeking those who worship him in spirit and truth. So worship God the way the Holy Spirit tells you to and let the other people alone. Now, what we need to be is, is striving together for the sake of the gospel. 
for the sake of the gospel and not be terrified by our opponents, by our adversaries. Did you know that there are people who hate the gospel? There are people who hate the gospel of Jesus Christ. They hate the Bible. They hate biblical morality. Paul says here, don't let those people terrify you. Don't let those people frighten you. Just keep on keeping on. Keep on using the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. God's Word is sharp and powerful and will pierce. It doesn't matter whether the person accepts the weapon or not. If you have a weapon that God's given you, He says use it. Use the sword of the Spirit. Use the helmet of salvation. Use your armor. Ephesians 6, 11-18. By the way, all the armor there in Ephesians 6, 11, 18 is tied into either the Bible, God's Word, or prayer. That's it. That's the armor. The Bible and prayer. So Paul says here that we're to stand fast, have one spirit and one mind. We're to be working together for the faith of the gospel. And then he says, because, don't be, don't be frightened of them, because they're gonna, God's going to destroy them. God's going to take care of them. And God's going to save you. But he says, but for now, you have been appointed and granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but to suffer for his sake. That's not a popular message. People don't like to hear about suffering for Christ. People say, well, it's not God's will that anybody suffer. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says you, it's been granted to suffer for his sake. Did you know that the Bible only uses the word Christian three times? And one of the times, only three times, the word Christian. Right. The disciples were called Christians, first in Antioch. Agrippa said, almost, you persuade me to be a Christian. And the other one is the one I'm going to show you now, over in 1 Peter. He says, if anyone suffer as a Christian, 1 Peter 5. Let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> Some people say, well, I'm no murderer, I'm no thief. They like to be busybodies. Peter says, don't suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, as a busybody in other people's matters. Keep your nose out of other people's business. <laughs> That's what he's saying. But if anyone suffers as a Christian, okay, if you suffer because of your faith in Jesus Christ, let him not be ashamed, but glorify God on this behalf. And then verse 19 is very powerful. For, for those people who say it's never God's will for you to suffer, that's, that's false. That's false teaching. 1 Peter 5, 19. Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. Let him those who suffer according to the will of God. And finally, one more place. And I was reading from 1 Peter 4 there, I'm sorry. 1 Peter 4, verses 15 through 19. But now in 1 Peter 5, watch what Peter says. He says, resist the devil steadfast in the faith, knowing the same sufferings are experienced by your brothers in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory, by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. So my friends, in this world, we're going to suffer. You know, we don't like suffering. I'm not suggesting you like it. I am telling you that the Bible says there will be suffering. And we're suffering according to the will of God. God says, don't suffer for being a busybody or a murderer or a thief. But if you suffer as a Christian, then be thankful. Thank God that people know you're a Christian. They know you're a Christ one, a believer, someone who believes the Bible, someone who stands for biblical morality. Now, you don't have to be obnoxious about it. Speak the truth in love if you're going to speak the truth, but speak the truth. Speak it lovingly. Show the love of God. People don't, don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? So we have to show people we care, and then we can show them the gospel and help them to receive Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's Paul's conclusion here in Philippians chapter 1. Stand together for the sake of the gospel, for the faith of the gospel, and don't be terrified of opponents, and don't be afraid to suffer for Christ. 
because God sees and God cares. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray right now for people who are suffering. If they're suffering for the cause of Christ, I pray that you would, uh, in a very special way, reach out your hand and uh, minister to them. I pray for any that are suffering for wrongdoing. I pray that you would ha cause them to repent and they would stop their sinning and they would look to you and be saved. I pray for our country. America now not only has the pandemic, but now we have rioting in the streets. There's all kind of evil. There's all kind of murder and crime and injustice being done. And I pray that there could be a, uh, an understanding of who's behind all of this. And actually that the evil one wants to tear apart America. The evil one wants to tear apart the free enterprise system, tear apart the country that has stood for God. Now, right now, I understand that we've gone far away from God. So, Father, help America to hear the wake-up call. Help America to repent. Help us to seek your face and confess our sins so you'll hear from heaven. Forgive our sin and heal our land. I pray you'd help people to love one another. Help people to like the Sunday school song we sang. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. So there's no, there's no color distinction with you. And I pray you'd help people to love their neighbor as themselves. Help believers to show the love of Christ to people of all, not only races, but all socioeconomic classes. Help us not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. Thank you that you love us all and that you sent your son Jesus to die for the sins of the world. I pray that people would turn to you, receive Jesus as their savior, and receive forgiveness and life and light. And I ask that you would just help our country to come back to you and uh, be restored to sanity and decency and law and order that's just and right and good. I do pray for the prisoners, those in the prisons. Watch over them and protect them. Keep them safe. I pray for the doctors and the nurses that are fighting this COVID-19 still. Keep them safe. Keep them from getting sick. Pray that you would heal the sick and comfort those that are downhearted, those that are discouraged, those that are defeated. Protect the president and the members of our leadership teams. Help them to make wise decisions and help us to keep on persevering for the sake of the gospel. We ask this because you're the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You're the God who loves us and sent his son, Christ. So we ask all this in the name of the one, the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus. For it's in his strong name that I pray. Amen. Thank you very much, friends. God bless you. I look forward to speaking with you tomorrow as we get into Philippians chapter 2.